Whoa, this is pretty awesome. I've currently got a troop of about, I reckon, 25 to 30 proboscis monkeys making their way through the mangroves here. There's a large male just up in the tree here. And he'll have a harem of up to 15, maybe even 20 girlfriends, which he has to look after all day, every day, and make sure that no other males are encroaching on his harem. So he likes to be right at the top of the trees, keeping an eye on what's going on. Also, that's where the best leaf shoots are, right at the tops of the trees. Now, they've got multiple chambered stomachs and they're able to eat uh, mangrove leaves, um, particularly the, the small leaves they like, the fresh little juicy ones. And they also have the amazing ability to regurgitate back up from that first stomach and chew that meal again. Awesome proboscis monkeys, endemic to only Borneo. Now they're an interesting looking group of individuals, that's for sure. The males has the big fleshy proboscis nose where the name comes from. They say it's used for a status symbol in dominant males. And it's obviously also got something to do with those nasal <coughs> noises that they make for their communication. The females, half the, half the size, about to 11 kilos, and they have a little, cute little pointy nose. The males will get to 22 kilos, and they'll, they can be found in troops of up to 40 individuals. They love the mangroves, and they love near the river systems. They're awesome climbers. They've got long tails, which helps them balance through the trees as well. And they're quite happily to just jump out of the top of a tree and free fall 20 meters. And they just must be so much fun. You can see they have some little ones with them as well. Now they eat fruits, leaves and seeds. And they can travel up to two kilometers a day away from the river in search of food. Luckily for the proboscis monkeys, their habitat is around the mangroves. Unfortunately, because of the whole palm oil industry, habitat losses is one of the main reasons for the decline in numbers and just about every other species on this island, to tell you the truth. However, these guys are more coastal, and I think in the higher salinity level areas, it's harder for people to put their palm oil. But unfortunately, then there's also prawn farms and fish farms. So industrialization is taking over and their habitat's getting smaller and smaller. It's really quite sad. Time is running out. Ow. Ow. <laughs> it's amazing actually how they communicate. They have six or seven different sounds which mean different things. They'll have a certain sound for alert. There's something like a monitor lizard or a snake or maybe a human. They'll have other words for go away or stay away. They'll have other, um, particularly the males, will have other vocal grunts and crazy noises that they make to warn other males, stay away, don't challenge me because they don't necessarily want to fight. They'd rather bluff the other male to keep away than actually have to get into a fight because then they'll risk injury. If the governments could make a collective decision and realize that the long-term eco-tourism is a lot more sustainable than making peanuts off of palm oil. Whereas if we save the habitat like this, it'll be here forever. Yay! Yay! Woo! Save the forest. Wee! Yeah. Save the forest. Wee! Yeah. Woohoo! Woohoo! Wee! Yeah. 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 Wee! Woohoo! Woohoo! Wee! Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Wee! Woohoo! Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe and help spread conservation awareness by sharing this video to your social media pages. Creating awareness leads to positive change and the protection of our species and habitats for the future. Thanks for watching.